Hello boys and girls, my name is Steve Browse and I work for the Center for Creative Education. Today we're going to make a cardboard relief style print. And by doing this, what you will need is cardboard, you will need some paint, which you can find around the house or perhaps run out and buy some at either Michaels or Home Depot, little samples. Okay, you'll need paintbrush, a glue stick. With that being said, we'll continue. There's different styles of printmaking. We have for the cardboard, once again, this is called relief printmaking. And this is because the images that we're gonna be adding our paint to are raised, opposed to intaglio printmaking, in which the image is carved into either metal or it can be carved into wood. This is the style that you might see dollar bills printed with. This style originated in Europe and came to the United States over time. You can see that there's a difference between the intaglio style printmaking. For this image here, this nice colorful image, I used a piece of styrofoam. That's another method that you can do at home. I took a piece of styrofoam in which I got from, uh, I think it was a hamburger tray or a chicken tray. And because it's styrofoam, it's a very soft um, material. So what I did here was I carved into the styrofoam the image that I wanted to with a pencil. Okay, but to begin with, I'm going to show you the process relief printing. First, you will take your cardboard, get that vision in your mind as to what you want to make. One thing I like to do is I like to make figures. A figure is a person or something that's animated and fun to play with. So I'm gonna take my glue stick, and I already have some shapes, and I have mostly rectangles, and here's a good shape that makes me think of a belly. I'm gonna take the glue stick, and I'm going to glue that down. Oops, Mr. Steve's glue stick. All right. Brand new glue stick. Okay. I'm gonna go around all of the edge. Just like so, all around the edge. I'm gonna put that in place. I'm gonna find a square. There's a good square. I might make it a little smaller. And she started. Okay. I have a few more rectangles. I trim that down. Now, one thing I like to do is I like to keep my shape separate. That means. I don't like the pieces to touch each other. That's in case you want to paint these different colors, then you don't have to worry about the colors running into each other. Okay. And if you want to add something around it, try not to try not to let the cardboard run off the pages. In fact, I'm going to add a border. A border will accentuate the image inside and make it pop out more and make it a little bit more interesting. Okay. I'm gonna make that a little shorter. Snap. Okay. So here I have the beginnings. This is the beginnings of my cardboard relief style printmaking. Okay, 
Now I want to add a little bit more flair to it. And I'm gonna think about a tree, maybe. So when I paint this, I'll probably use green. Or maybe it's gonna be a sky. Hmm. Buildings in the back, perhaps? Let's see. Skyscape, skyscrapers. Okay, a little bit more glue. And like so. And that is our finished print. Now we're going to add paint to this. With that, I'm gonna start out with a lighter color. And it's very important that you put lots of paint on here and keep the paint wet. We're not painting the cardboard. We want lots of paint on here so when we make our print, there's some paint on the cardboard and we can use it. I'm using acrylic paint right now. However, you can use tempera paint. Tempera paint works great. There's a lot of things you can do with cardboard. Cardboard is an artist's best friend. Okay. I see my orange is drying up. So I'm gonna put some of that, add some. Okay. Take my red, scoop it on. It's Okay, we're gonna, this is gonna end up being on the other paper. You'll actually walk away with two pieces of art, which is pretty cool. You'll have your cardboard art, and you'll have your print. Prints are great, you can make more than one. Prints make great gifts. You can make prints, you can put them on cards and give them away as cards. Okay. How are we doing here, Mr. Steve? Mr. Steve, I'm going to add a little bit more paint on the background. which you can do, you don't have to, but I think I'm going to add a little bit more, a different color in the background just to make it pop out. I'm 
most important thing about this, children, is to have a fun time when you're done. Art is fun. Be confident, be happy. Okay, I'm almost there. Okay, Mr. Steve's robot with a nice blue sky. All right, so now it's time to take that piece of paper, copy paper. That's all you need is copy paper. We're gonna place that gently down right on top. Try to make it fit. And we're gonna take our hands and carefully, we're gonna burnish. Burnish is when you rub this softly. You wanna find all those shapes and images, the cardboard edges. You wanna take it right up. Because I put some paint on the background, I'm also gonna push down on those sides too. Okay. Okay, there we go. And there we go. And that is our print. Now it looks kind of sketchy, and you might say, oh, that didn't. but that's all right. That gives the print, that gives the piece of art character. Okay, so that is called a relief style print. Now, as I showed you in Taglio, we'll set this aside, let this dry, and we'll have this as a piece of art. So, as I said, the intaglio print, which is the um, style of print where you carve into the material, you can do so with the styrofoam that you can get from meat trays or chicken trays. What I did here was I took the pencil, I carved into the styrofoam, nice and deep valleys, so you don't want the paint to go in there, or if it does, when we push down, we don't want to push quite as hard. It's important to put a lot of paint on here, not too much, but you want to be able to look at it and see that it's kind of shiny. And that might mean watering your paint down with water. I'm using acrylic right now and it tends to dry quicker. All right, so here I put that down. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna set it down. I can only, and I'm gonna take the material like that and I'm gonna do that burnishing again. I'm gonna rub it carefully, not too hard. Just like so. We'll lift this. And you have an image once again. A little sketchy, but you can do multiple images, different colors, and maybe we know, maybe I need some more paint on the top next time, and that'll fix the problem. One more style I'd like to share with you is called stencils. Stencils is another form of printmaking that we can do at home. Stencils is how a lot of your t-shirts and different images, maybe on um, containers or uh, boxes are, are made. And with that, it's like a, uh, you, you cut into the paper. Okay, I cut an image here. Thought about what I was gonna do. And instead of using a brush, you wanna use something like a sponge and you want to dab it straight up and down dab okay
Blue is Mr. Steve's favorite color. Remember, dabbing motion, up and down. Dabba, dabba, dabba. Okay, we're gonna lift, and we're gonna have that print. Similar image, right? The same image. Okay, all right. Print making came from China. The first known technique for printing was in AD 220, where Chinese monks painted carved wooden blocks with ink and then stamped the design onto textiles and paper. Europe thought this was pretty cool, yeah, pretty cool. and jumped on the bandwagon, printing cloth patterns and playing cards. A Chinese inventor expanded on this idea by creating the first movable type system using ceramic blocks that each had a letter protruding from them. He was able to arrange them into whatever combination he needed to print a page. Ink and paper was then placed on top and rubbed against the type. This design was improved on for hundreds of years with the addition of harder materials like bronze. Until Europe again jumped on the bandwagon and ditched their wood blocks for metal type systems. Got with this. Until they got lazy and a German goldsmith named Johannes Gutenberg invented the printing press in 1440. This used the same principle as the movable type system, but added hinged boards and a press to squeeze the paper against the ink in one fast movement. The result was a much more accurate and faster way of reproducing work. The lowered cost of producing books revolutionized printing and ushered in a new age of intelligence. Oh, indubitably. This form of printing evolved to allow the reproduction of images as well, by using different methods of etching and design such as mesotint, which is the process of roughening a metal plate with a small tool with metal teeth on it. Ink sticks to the small scratches on the metal, and the plate is then passed through a printing press. Other methods of etching included the use of acids and chemicals. Oh. Flatbed printing was all well and good, but a few people decided it wasn't efficient enough and moved to rotary and cylinder printers, which rolled a plate around a drum. Paper was then fed between the drum and the impression cylinder, which replaced the screw press from Gutenberg's printing press. This new and more efficient way of printing allowed for newspapers and other media to be quickly and mass-produced. It was also a lot cheaper, which allowed for a wider audience. In 1904, an American paper manufacturer noticed that when he forgot to load paper into the press, it would print onto the rubber impression cylinder below, and was actually a lot sharper than the regular print. So he created a new machine with an extra cylinder, and acted like it was all intentional. This was the first offset printing press, and thanks to small improvements over the years, it is still to this day the most commonly used method for large volume paper printing. So in general, children, we've gone from intaglio style printing, which originated in China and Europe, to offset printing, but now it's all gone digital, and now the type of printing most of us experience is called digital printing. Well, children, that about does it for printmaking. I hope you enjoyed that, and um, feel free to watch the video over in case you have any questions or thoughts. Um, as to how it might be done, and uh, we'll see you next time. In the beginning, there was... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, printmaking came from China, actually. Well, you know what? I want to tell them about other kinds of prints. Okay. okay.